Your mind is a fucking ocean full of sharks of anxiety, patrolling the reefs of memory, wells of depression calling mournfully from the depths, octopi of indecision, the tentacles of which overwhelm and slap at your fucking face with all the shit that needs doing but is yet undone. The ocean of your mind is a vast effulgent expanse. It is a salient and saline wakeful stillness and from the deep quick shadows skitter and we only half glimpse something darting about from the periphery of our own perception or feel the current from a swish of a tail as we ride the slow swells upon the surface the ups and downs of mood and mind we are sailors upon the surface of our own fucking mind afraid to jump into that blue wine for the fear of entering the food chain and if you're a sailor attached to the boat of ego the boat whose every fucking splinter and nail was carefully crafted by you and you're not willing to let it go then please don't Plumbing the depths of mind is transformative, but strange and difficult shit. There's nothing wrong with staying in the boat. That's the natural setup anyway. But if you want to know yourself, I don't mean know the boat or the creatures in the depths. I don't mean your fucking thoughts or egoic constructs. I mean, if you want to know thy fucking self, the oceanic existence that you actually are, then it's time to fucking dive in. Fear is a shark. Not just any shark, either. It's a fucking great white or a hammerhead. Anxiety is the condition of swimming on the surface, expecting your legs to get ripped off by a rising shadow from the depths of your own oceanic mind. Panic is the frantic swimming away from the unseen eating machine, expecting to be torn asunder any fucking moment. That's not the way. You'll need to deep dive into the depths of your own mind. You need to find a shark and swim directly at that motherfucker. There will be fear, but it's a fear you are facing of your own volition, which is very different from just hoping not to get your ass eaten. I mean, unless you want your ass eaten. Find the shark, bonk it on the fucking nose, grasp it with arms and legs, and hold fast. Fun fact, hammerheads and great whites must stay in constant motion so that oxygen-rich water will enter through their gills. Hold the fucking shark of anxiety until it dies in your arms. Hold on to that fearful thought because it's just the act of ignoring it that's so fucking spooky. So look that motherfucker in the eye. Hold it still and understand that it's only an electrical impulse in your wrinkly pink meat computer. It's your amygdala being overreactive trying to protect you even when you're safe. Hold it still and watch it fade into what it is. A thought that's been faced and neutralized by the fact that you're fucking facing it. There are octopi and squid down there too. They are the have-tos and must-tos. They are the never-ending list of shit that needs doing but not yet done. There are tentacles that come slap at your head and grasp and smother in a chaotic writhing such that we don't even see what the fuck's going on. If you want to see the squid, you've got to swim away from it, enough to see it in entirety just as it is. Pressures to act, pressures to do, expectations that are too big, judgments, we're avoiding the feeling of being trapped in a situation, doing shit we'd rather not be fucking doing and feeling hopeless or perhaps guilty about it. Feeling like we're not good enough at doing shit. All we can do is deal with one fucking tentacle at a time, and it does no good to be rushing through shit just to deal with all the other tentacles slapping at us. Make it an exercise in presence. Do the fucking thing and be entirely there. Let the squid go do other shit, and when the thing's done, you can call it forth and deal with another tentacle. You can only do one fucking thing at a time anyway. Or you can decide to take a fucking break, but a break isn't sitting still being tortured by a mental octopus. A break is being present, being right fucking here, right fucking now. Figure it the fuck out. Depression is a fucking whale. We don't usually see the enormous leviathan, we just hear its mournful call from the depths of the ocean of mind. But we can call it to ourselves through inquiry. We sit in the shallow surf in avoidance of the deep and get pummeled by the waves of our own reaction. And each time we're tumbled under, we hear the whale's depressing call. Fucking call back. Be willing to stay underwater and look within to try and understand why it is we feel this way. The whale will approach, and when it does, it's fucking overwhelming because it's so enormous. Depression is just too big to feel like we can tackle it. A whale grows to that size by eating tiny shrimp called krill. Tons of blubber and muscle and bone, the largest fucking sea creature fed by krill, one of the tiniest. Depression is no different. Thousands of tiny hurts and perceived failures and disappointments like krill enter us and form our whale. It's very difficult to separate krill from whale. They're one fucking thing, but to understand that the mind is the sea itself and the whale is something experienced within the mind, a thing fed and filled by tiny hurts and assimilated as opposed to understood, dealt with, expressed, and expunged. The whale of depression is allowed to grow by a false perception of who we think we are. We identify with thoughts and 
our own experiences and they become us. But listen, you are not your fucking thoughts. You are not shrimp or whale. Look down. Do you have a fucking tail? Lure the Leviathan into the shallows. Call it until the feeling is in the forefront of your mind and be with it. Because those mournful songs from miles away you try to ignore are fucking running you. Beach the whale and watch it slowly die in the light of your awareness. Watch it rot under the hot sun of your pristine attention. It's going to fucking stink. You're going to feel like shit with it so close. But remember, it's not you. It's how you survive by holding everything in to just keep swimming, just keep fucking swimming. It's a testament to your strength, not to your weakness, but you have to let it go and let it decompose because it's not you. No matter how it feels, let the seagulls and crabs do their shit and just deal with the stench. And meanwhile, how about for once, put yourself first while you mourn the whale, while you mourn a piece of yourself who you thought you were dying. Take yourself for a walk. Do a healthy fucking thing. Gaze upon something beautiful. And the experience of life that congealed as a whale will become disseminated into the sea. Never forgotten, but spread into fish and crab and snail. Those are way fucking easier to deal with. It's about awareness. Everything you know of life is an ocean of interconnected particles, a quantum foam frothing from the waves of our attention. And everything you perceive is made of oceanic awareness that you've labeled as separate things, but is actually all just fucking you, an interplay of consciousness, like a dream or like currents in an ocean or a breeze through the atmosphere. So dream the one dreamer's dream. Be that cloud in the sky. Be that wave upon the sea. Turn your attention inside out, and you can begin to dismantle the ghosts of thought that haunt your depths. Ahoy, motherfuckers. It's all you. Toodaloo.